Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Cruz. Welcome back to The Culture Code. Our guest today, I'm very excited, super innovative company, the Chief People Officer at Waymo, Becky Busich. Becky, welcome, and where are you joining from today? Hey, great to be with you today, Kevin. I'm here in Mountain View, California, at our headquarters for Waymo. Fantastic. I'm on the East Coast, but I had escaped into uh, the San Jose area for about a month in September to soak up your better weather and uh, all that the Silicon Valley has to offer. So I love that part of the world. Let me ask you, Becky, I know Waymo, people who are into to technology know Waymo, but not everybody outside of California or outside of tech might know Waymo. So who are you guys? What do you do? And how big are you as a company? Sure. So I couldn't be more excited about our mission as a company. We're an autonomous driving technology company with a mission to a bold mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to get where they were going. And we're building really this technology that's designed to scale across multiple driving environments and, you know, the most challenging of use cases. So all use cases. And it really, our technology has enabled us to be the first company out there to offer autonomous uh, trips to members of the public, to our community, and in a 24 by 7 kind of way. And, you know, this is around the clock, multiple metro areas, including if you're in the airport in Phoenix, you can hail a ride. It's pretty cool. Um, when we think about our company, really safety is at the heart of everything we do. And that's what I'm so proud of, because uh, because we're building a technology that's going to make it safer on our roads. We're super conscientious about this, and we want to bring it to more people in more places. Uh, today, we have approximately a little over 2,000 Waymanots. Waymanots is what we call our Waymo employees. And we are a subsidiary of Alphabet. For those who might not know, we started as the Google self-driving car project. Yeah, so I, I love this. And again, this is you're probably laughing because I keep doing these clarifications. Anyone in tech is going to know that story, right? But not everybody outside knows. So Google, now Alphabet. And um, incredibly innovative uh, autonomous vehicle platform. And I'm glad you mentioned like Phoenix as an example. People don't realize you can get in a self-driving car in Phoenix. You can get in a self-driving car in San Francisco. I mean, this isn't in the lab. You guys are now have taken out of the lab and it's starting in the cities. And that's pretty wild. I also love that you emphasize the mission. I won't go deep into this and bore you, Becky, but I happen to get... A, uh, a, a vehicle recently that has a pretty good um, full self-driving capability that I've been playing with. And I've been surprised at how good it is, the technology. And yet when I told my 82 year old father about this, he was horrified, you know, about how this is unsafe and all that. I'm like, no, no, dad, this is making driving safer. Like, you know, this is the mission is about the safety. And I don't know about you, Becky, when I see all the distracted drivers and everything else going around me, I look forward to the day when we're all being shuttled around in Waymo cars. I'm going to feel much safer when that day gets here. It's just wonderful to hear, Kevin. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> so we're here today to talk about culture. And I'm fascinated because Waymo's a pretty exciting company. Can't even imagine what that culture's like. And I'm sure you mentioned the, the Way Waymanots. Did I get that right? That's right, Waymanots. And, and any strong culture has a term for each other, right? And you, you went into it in your first answer. I loved it. So the Waymanots, like, they know what the culture is. Like, they're living it. They're breathing it. They see it. But how would you describe it to an outsider? You know, I really, it comes down to three words or three, I guess you'd say, phrases. And I'll kind of get into each. One is mission-driven. Two, I think, is safety and accessibility. And then I'd say three is stronger together when I think about the culture, the mission and values. And so for us, when you think about mission driven, our Waymanots, as we call them, um, we are truly driven by the why. Why did we join the company? And we're really intentional about understanding that why just starting from day one, like interview process. You know, how do we select folks? We want to understand why are people choosing Waymo? What motivates you? And then you, you, you see that further explored when we think about our new hire orientation and, um, you know, our new hire cohort, cohorts, I should say, and kind of the discussions that they have. So that's one for mission driven. Second, safety and accessibility. It's like what we do every day. It's all about safety as our foundation. And I'm so proud of that. And I think it starts also in our orientation. We're very um, intentional. There's a section called what drives you. 
And I still remember my first day at Waymo over four years ago in my orientation where we each shared, why did we join Waymo? And for many, it is so personal and the stories are so touching. Um, you know, it could be a family member who is not independent, might not be able to get behind the wheel. And so how that brings their independence to life, how they can actually do things every day. But it could also be that some have had the tragic loss of a loved one. And so that is just so important to them to bring a technology such that we're not losing lives like we are today from the traffic accidents and what could be avoided with our technology. And then I would say the third really gets into that stronger together. And it's something you see every day in the culture and how we operate. It's that culture of collaboration and that what people are doing together to bring the Waymo technology to the world. And it's you know solving the most challenging problems together. It's having that psychological safety to do that, knowing that you are never by yourself um, on some of the most challenging um, you know, day in and day out um, things that we are working on together. And so I think it's knowing that you have extremely talented expertise of the peers next to you um, who are also going to help you. Yeah. So with this culture, like I, I imagine part of it is, um, you know, strong culture will will attract a certain kind of person like as a can at the candidate stage and will repel others that just aren't into that or something, you know, just don't feel the mission or it's like, I'm not that collaborative. I'm kind of not that collaborative. <laughs> um, so part of it starts with the hiring, but then you also have to sort of uh, foster and, 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 and grow this culture inside. So what are some of the programs or initiatives? Like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Yeah, I think, you know, when I think about, we bring it to life in our kind of normal team gatherings, what we call team sync. And so if I think about even the pandemic as an example, where it was just a real kind of time of unification. And so it was the touchstones of what is so great about our culture in this moment of challenge that we can all take strength from. And so that was just one example of how just taking our regular, we call them team syncs, our employee gatherings, and just talking about our values. Mm -hmm. and, and we've kind of evolved that now to this thing called the Waymo way, which is a celebration of Waymanots who live our values every day. It's lifting up their stories because they are truly what I would call our culture carriers. And it's showcasing, which also kind of teaches others, I think, the things that they are doing to really help Waymo move forward. And so I think it's lifting up those stories. So that's one, one area I would say. Um, second, I think it's through this real spirit of volunteerism and giving back in the communities in which we operate. So I'd say there's a few things we do there. We have something called Waymo Serve, where employees across the country are encouraged to volunteer as a team and support their local nonprofits. And I'm just so grateful that we, we have time, we set aside time for our employees to go and volunteer in the communities. And just this past fall, some of the um, engagements we did and with nonprofits were like the Compass Family Services in San Francisco, um, the South LA Teen Tech Center, um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving in Arizona. And so these are just a few. But then we always make sure on a regular basis that our employees can engage in efforts. And those are things from participating into this local food bank or a donation drive and delivery at this moment to maybe it's in the fall, this fall we did delivering backpacks to schools. And so I think that spirit of volunteerism and engagement in the communities in which we operate is, is critical and something we do day in and day out. And then lastly, I'd say it's really about accessibility. Um, and I think about accessibility in the community in particular when we launched Rider Only um, in San Francisco, our co-CEO, Takedra Mawakana, did it in a local publication, in all the local publications in San Francisco. So it wasn't just about getting it in maybe one of the, you know, kind of a broader reach, like San Francisco Chronicle. It was about thinking of the micro communities and areas within the city. Mm. And so thinking about Sing, Sing Tao, which is the Chinese language publication. Um, and so what are those micro publications in the San Francisco area, for example, because we know that we are building for the world and it's not just one individual. And so we want feedback from across the user base, if you will, in a different city. And so that's, those are just a few of the things that I think about building culture. Um, I think about how we're doing it, you know, I think through our employees day in and day out. And these are just a few examples. Becky, can you go deeper on 
the like lifting the stories of your culture carriers the Waymo way you know is that like you hear something and it gets put in the newsletter is that uh recognition at an award center like what, what does that mean yeah i mean i think it has to be it has to be part of real life and so we ask folks to, to share those stories so this past week there were you know three individuals that were highlighted and it was through a publication that we have we send an email out to the to the whole company that's the waymo way and it talked about those individuals and what they did and it was pretty amazing because it was not just like, here's what they did, but then it was a little bit of background about the individual. What makes what makes them tick? And it was just also us getting to know that person um, because I think when you have that human human connection, it just really brings the story to light. And then we take that story and lift it up as well through our team sync or employee gathering because sometimes it's not just about putting it in an email, but it's about talking about it because I think when you have storytelling, it needs to be brought to life in different, um, you could say, ways. How often do you do the team syncs? Um, they're, they're on a consistent basis, at least once a month. But you're having, what you do is you have a lot of teams like mine come together on a more even frequent basis. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I think um, just the predictable cadence, w whether it's once a month, once a quarter, once a week, you know, in some organizations, knowing that there's going to be those times, you know, to ask questions, get information to, you know, get recognition and then to supplement, you know, even more, but just having that predictable uh, cadence is so critical. Let me, let me shift over. I'm, I'm, uh, people think of me as being passionate about leadership development. And that is true, but it's because <laughs> our managers, our frontline managers are, are the, the drivers of 70% of employee engagement. So I really care about culture and engagement, but I know the big lever is the, the frontline leaders. I, ballpark, I'm guessing in a 2000 person organization, you might have, I don't know, 300 give or take frontline leaders. Um, and not a really big company. So like I would normally guess like, oh, they're not, you know, Becky doesn't have a lot of resources to develop her managers. But you're also coming from Google that has really robust programs. So I'm curious, what are you doing for that leadership development and manager training, especially at the frontline level? Um, I couldn't agree with you more about managers. It's so important to develop. And when I think about it, frontline managers are just fundamental. Um, you know, people go home every night. They're talking about at the dinner table, their experience at work that given day. And there, it's often the manager who has that, who's that pivotal person who's either making or breaking their experience. And it's how they feel valued. It's how the work that they are excited about it or not excited about. And so we understand how essential that is. And I think for us, it starts also with when we have folks who come into the role because they've been promoted and they're taking on people management responsibility for the first time, or they're coming from outside the company, maybe they've managed for a long time. We kind of don't assume anything. We don't know what they've learned to that point. And so we have all of our managers go through a new manager orientation. And it's after about three weeks of joining the company, we really want them to understand, okay, you've been to our, you know, our orientation and you understand it. You've gone in our car and you under, you've experienced our, you know, the writer, the, the writing experience, if you will. But it's then really getting them grounded on what are, what's our manager philosophy and what are our manager expectations? And we establish clear manager expectations for Waymo, developed by Waymo for Waymo. And those are expectations which we want each of our managers to live by. And then there's quite a few resources behind each expectation in terms of here are the ways, maybe you're really good at this one, but you're not as good as th this one. What are the ways you can learn and grow and develop further? So I think that's first off, let's not assume anything and let's ensure we have a good foundation from which we start for all of our managers. And then I think from there, we do quite a bit of, we're a startup. We do quite a bit of just-in-time training as well, knowing that if a person is thinking of an hour as a performance management cycle, what are we doing to help them in those moments when they're delivering feedback or if, for example, we're now doing our employee engagement survey, we have the results. Let's do a training specific to that. What are you doing now next with your team at this given moment? And then sometimes we'll bring manager circles together where you can learn from another manager who has the wisdom of experience. Um, and that is especially useful for newer managers. So those are a few of the things that we're doing um, really to think about managers and how we grow and develop them at the company. So if I understood you, if I'm uh, Kevin gets promoted from individual contributor to first time manager, 
it's more or less mandatory to go to this, this, you know, this, this program the next time it's offered, right? Yeah, we, we offer them on a quarterly basis. So it's something that we take pretty seriously and that they're not just there once a year or something, but they're there continuously. And we always ensure the manager of the manager is aware as well so that they are help fostering and encouraging and even maybe having a dialogue post the training with that individual who's a new manager or a, you know, either to Waymo or as a first time manager. You know, for our listeners, again, I'm always listening for like stealable ideas. You know, what are you going to share that other people are going to steal? And and sometimes it could be like some cool, innovative, shiny thing. Other times it's a little bit more subtle, but there's still very important. And and so one thing, you know, LeadX did a benchmark survey of leadership development last year. We're getting ready to do it again this year. And I was shocked that in the majority of, of companies, manager training is not mandatory. Like we, we, they're so important to the organization and to the health and well-being of the individuals. And it's like, no, you don't have to have any training for that at all. Like it blows my mind. You can tell I get like angry about that. So, you know, one stable idea is, yeah, you got someone new to roll, send them to some training, send, give them some training of some, of some kind. Um, the other thing, and I, uh, I've got this post going viral on LinkedIn actually today about this. You mentioned the role of the participants manager, the manager's manager we see that that is the number one variable. Do, do people sign up, participate and engage with your training? Do they take it seriously? It's if their manager cares about it. If my manager says, Kevin, get back to work. You're that, forget about that HR stuff. I'm not gonna do it. If my manager is asking me about it in the O3, telling me about how important it is, maybe showing up and helping to lead a program or joining a circle, all of a sudden I realize this is serious. This isn't just a, you know, some, some other kind of training that I could put to the side. So I wanna make sure people, people heard that. Um, so Becky, let me ask, you mentioned that you like, you just finished an employee engagement survey. Tell me more. So what are the ways you're gathering data about culture and how people are feeling about work? Yeah, no, I think it's very much a two way conversation always within Waymo in terms of how we engage with folks. And so yes, one at one mechanism is we have an employee engagement survey, which we run two times a year. And it's really that opportunity to get feedback from employees about how things are going. And we take it really seriously. I think you do a survey, people expect to hear back. So what are you doing? What are the actions you take? And I'm proud as a company that we make it such a serious, you could say, mechanism for how we get work done and how we make things better. Um, I think second, it's just the other piece of it is we have employee gatherings on a regular basis and we are never shy about getting feedback. We always solicit feedback. There's a survey after every employee gathering what it went well, what do you suggest? And folks are not shy. They are very direct with us about their feedback. And leadership sees those regularly and they are very fast. They, we get them out and they come back. And I think for that, you then you also have a lot of teams who are doing sub team meetings as mm. well, like my team this week. And again, it's continually getting feedback. Many times there'll be what we call a Dory. A Dory is just like our internal tool where folks can post questions. So it's always, it's like the expectation kind of goes back to the two-way communication in the company is that folks will have a voice that they can raise their question. And that could be scary for many leaders. You don't know what question could get posed, but I think the more frequent it becomes part of the day-to-day -day operating mechanism, which is what is expected here and what we do, then that just becomes how you work. And so for us, it's like, what is that question? People can bring it. And there's feedback a lot of times in the question. It'll be a question with feedback. So I think those are a few of the mechanisms by which we collect and we act on it um, just kind of every day. Yeah, it, it, it's, again, you're so casual about all, like, it's just, it's like the air, you know, like the feedback is there. And that is another stealable idea. I think, you know, even on an individual level, uh, giving someone constructive feedback feels awkward when you never give them any feedback. And then nine months into the year, you all of a sudden have to give them some critical feedback. When feedback conversations are two way and positive and constructive and just part of the culture, then it's no big deal. You talked about collaboration early in our, our, our interview and the, the value of psychological safety. And you clearly have it because people are lighting up the conversation boards. They're, they're engaging with the engagement survey, employee voice survey. And that shows that like you're just gathering it as just, well, of course we're gathering, we're gathering it um, every, every day. Let, let's switch, Becky. We, um, Forbes doesn't give me a lot of words to play with in the article and the podcast version is, is kind of short. But I want to hit you with some fun, maybe faster questions, starting with 
Imagine that you could send a book or a podcast or something to all your team members and they would promise you that they'd read it, listen to it, internalize it. What would you send everyone? Okay, it's not going to be as big a bold, but it's going to be essential. And it's going to be Guess How Much I Love You. Um, guess How Much I Love You, which is a children's book. And <laughs> many readers or listeners might not be familiar with that. But it's just kind of a basis for, like, you know, it's inclusion. It's how, you know, it's making people feel feel safe. It's feeling loved. But I think in the workplace, it's like knowing that people are going to show up for one another and people care about one another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the basis. It's that human to human connection, which we know in the world in which we operate is so important. And so I think it's just kind of getting to the basics of knowing that an individual feels included and person feels safe, um, that they can bring their authentic self to work, that there's a sense of assume good intent within the culture and um, that, again, it goes also to psychological safety, which we do talk a lot about internally, that people feel like I can discuss a topic and I will be OK and that I can take risks. And so I think this is kind of, again, it's just more of a children's story, but I think it really shows the value of a person. And so I think that's kind of why I think it's fun. And you mentioned one of my favorite pieces of, of wisdom that if people really do this, it can change their lives, assume positive intent, right? I mean, how many times do we react to, to some interaction with somebody and we assume that they're a jerk or they don't like us or they're mean or they're selfish or whatever, but if we would just assume positive intent, you know, we don't know what's going on in their world. Most people don't show up at work and try to mess things up for everybody else. <laughs> like the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? That's exactly what I, I say all the time, Kevin. It's so true. Assume positive intent. So what is something um, that you know now that maybe you wish you knew when you first became a chief people officer? Imagine if you could send yourself a Slack message back in time, what, what would be some advice? Um, just always know the big and the significant and bold impact you have on people's lives every day. And I think through a pandemic, navigating a pandemic, that's been so true. Uh, when I think about the impact that this role has on shaping, you know, the experience of all the individuals in the company. And so first, when you think about the pandemic, it's knowing how this role was critical and essential to normalizing lives of how people just do their show up for their families and then even for work, but at the same time, keeping the company going. Mm -hmm. uh, I think another one is just that time goes so fast and the news cycles go so fast. And what I mean by that also, when you think about just kind of going back into the pandemic, it was we had to pivot so quickly as a company. New information was coming out all the time, be it from the CDC or from whatever the source may be. And you know, safety is the foundation for us as a company. So what are we doing to ensure the folks have the safest experience? They feel safe, it could be psychologically safe, physically safe, that they also have equity in their work because we knew some folks, they're in the cars, they're in an operations job, they're in a hardware lab. There's others who are software engineers, it's a little easier for them to work at home. But really thinking about equity in terms of the experience um, and then I think also just really thinking about lastly, it's just like, how are you showing up and helping people so that they can get everything that they can done in a thoughtful way. And so it's just being thoughtful at every step. You have to go fast, but you also have to be thoughtful. If you think about how we had to reshape the way work was done, mm. especially in the early days. So I think kind of taking it from the top, it's, knowing you're not always gonna have information, you're gonna to have to go quickly, but bringing all the information that you have to bear. So that's in this role, you are a connector. Mm. You have a huge impact because you have a connection to the entire company in ways that many others don't. Mm. And so it's using that chair and using it wisely. Love it. We're doing this chat end of October. So we're almost at the end of the year, 2023. Um, what do you plan to focus on for your team? You know, like, what are you guys going to be working on in the year ahead? So, you know, for us, I think it's a lot when I think of us, meaning my team, the people team, yeah. 
It's about streamlining. Um, I think about, we built so many great, you know, foundational efforts for the company over time. And so I think you always have to look and review them. And so are we being as effective as we can be? Um, are we getting everything out of that investment that we're making in all of our people efforts? And when I say investment, something like performance management, you know, for example, are you getting, is it the right amount of time spent for what you're getting out of it? I call it the ROI. And I, I think of it, uh, you know, I'm a continuous improvement person. So I think about it like you have the Golden Gate Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge, they're painting that Golden Gate Bridge all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're going from one side to the next side. And I think for my team this year, in particular coming into 24, it's about how are we reevaluating some of the different efforts and ensuring it's the highest and best use um, of everyone's time. And I say that because the friction or the thing that we're going against, we have this bold technology to bring to the world. And the faster that we can bring that technology, the better. So the faster that we can hit some of those goals that we need to achieve, the sooner we'll be able to bring it to the world and the sooner we can save more lives. So I think that's always the trade-off. So it's just being mindful, getting feedback, and then streamlining. Becky, when it comes to what you know, I'm curious what you're most excited about with Waymo right now, because there's so much exciting stuff. Yeah, from the outside, I would call myself a techno optimist that happens to be a buzzword the weeks here that we're chatting. Uh, there's that phrase, you know, that, that the future is, all, is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. And so if anyone wants to see the future, go get a ride from the Phoenix airport or in, in hail a, a, a Waymo uh, taxi in San Francisco. The future is already here and I'm excited for it. You're on the inside. You know things you can't even talk about yet. Like, what are you most excited about that you can share? You know, I think for me, it's about lifting up our mission, you know, and bringing it to the world. You know, safety is our foundation. And I know I've talked about that. But as we think about Waymo One and where we are, it's being able to thoughtfully scale and take that. And we are right at the precipice. And when I say that, we started in Phoenix and we've been in a commercial service for Phoenix for a while. But then now we are the first and only company to offer that fully autonomous technology of the ride 24 by seven to members of the public in San Francisco, which is freaking amazing. Yes. And so I think for us, it's we're steadily building it to be in multiple ge geographic areas. So from Phoenix to San Francisco, we launched a tour in L.A. And so we're inviting residents and visitors to come out and experience the Waymo driver. And now Austin will be our next market. And so I think about, for me, what excites me, what gets me out of bed every day is the impact that we're having on thousands of individuals in their daily lives. If I think about my own parents who are aging and will now soon not be able to be able to drive, but are so independent, it's being able to you know, not lose that independence. Um, or I think about even just a friend of my son's who doesn't have the best vision and is a bit more visually impaired, so isn't going to feel safe driving, mm -hmm. but knowing that he can still feel very safe because he can also be independent and take a Waymo ride, for example, and not have to worry about the driving record of the individual who's behind the wheel either. Um, so I think these are a few of the use cases out there. And I think that just, it brings a lot of joy to me to think about those who are out there person with epilepsy, like, I, you know, who can't independently go about their day to day world. Mm -hmm. And so I think about all the um, all of the world that we will be able to impact such that individuals can go about their day to day lives in an unencumbered way. It's pretty amazing. And so I think that's what drives me and excites me about where we are and that we're going to doing it in a very like thoughtful way um, that can make our riders feel very safe. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for that mission. Uh, Chief People Officer at Waymo, Becky Busich, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Kevin.